You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the 7-Minute Security Podcast. Brian Johnson here, and I am excited to be talking to you today about Pi-Hole, which is a free software package you can download and install on a variety of Linux flavors. And uh, what it gives you is a nice, snappy, fast DNS server. Um, but the main reason I'm running it is that it maintains a gargantuan list of known you know, nasty bad sites or malvertising sites. And um, so you get the benefit of not having that crap load and uh, also have a faster browsing experience. So it's a, it's a win from both a performance and a security standpoint. So I'm just installing it here on a Ubuntu box in my lab and I'm going to uh, also install OpenSSH server just so that I can go in and manage this box a little easier later on once uh, once everything gets installed. Um, but I'm, beside that, I'm pretty much just going through the Ubuntu wizard. Uh, I'm going to reboot, and then I'm going to do one huge uh, batch of updates by uh, issuing the good old apt-get update and apt-get upgrade with a tack Y at the end uh, so that uh, the packages install without me having to say yes because, you know, where you know, when you're a dork, every single keystroke counts, right? So at this point, I'm just going to let the Ubuntu box slurp down the remaining updates. And then because I got this running in a, in a virtual environment, I'm just going to shut it down and take a snapshot so that if I screw something up with the PyHole install or config, I can just roll back to this known good state. All right, so now let me just grab my IP and I'll just verify that I can get to it via SSH. Now it's gonna warn you a little later here in the install that uh, you should set, set a static IP. So keep, keep that in mind as you're, you're planning your deployment. But uh, great, it looks like I, I can get in through SSH. So I'm going to elevate to root and get ready for the install. Now, what I like about the uh, right in the front page of the PyHole uh, site, it says, hey, all you got to do is run this one curl command and you'll get up and running. Well, for whatever reason, and it's probably in the error with my brain, this didn't work for me. It fired up the DNS services, but not the web ones. So I'm going to go under review the code, and uh, I'm just going to suck down uh, the Git repository, and then I'll manually, uh, let me move this, I will manually go into the install directory and run the install script. So I guess we're down to two or three commands instead of one, but hey, that, that ain't bad. That's still pretty easy and pretty, pretty self-explanatory. All right, so the mo for the most part, we're just going to say OK and next, next, next. Uh, the only things really we're going to have to set manually are... The, uh, the DNS servers. So I'm just going to set mine to Comcast since that's, that's my service provider. If I can remember to type, there we go. All right, and then uh, sure, yep, I'll select all the protocols. That sounds good. All right, everything looks great. I'm going to leave it at 3.2. 242, and then you just got one more warning that, hey, you should just make this DNS server have a static IP because clients are constantly going to be looking for it, and if they can't find it, uh, DNS ain't going to work right. And yes, of course, we do want to install the web admin interface, so I'll say yes to that. And of course, I'd love to log queries, so we will do that. And there we go. It's pretty much... It really is pretty much ready to go at this point. Now, I actually installed this on um, 192.168.3.5 on my machine, so I'm going to go to it. And what I like is that even without logging in, you do get 
you know, uh, a snapshot into, you know, sort of your DNS health. Um, so you can see the queries, uh, how many queries today, what percentage were blocked, all that. That's very, very cool. Um, and now we can log in using that password we were provided at the end of the install. And now we can start poking around. You know, we can look at the query log and see, uh, you know, which systems are making requests for what sites. And, um, you know, if we run into anything that we want to manually whitelist or blacklist, we can do that. Um, now, really, I have not dug in a lot beyond this. I've kind of set it and forget it. But I do want to show you one snag I ran into right away, and that was uh, on my iPhone. I noticed that right after I got uh, Pi Hole up and running, look at this. Um, I don't seem to be able to search anything in Spotify. Uh, oh, geez, I can't even I can't even pull up Dane Cook. Yikes. Uh, let me do one more search. Oh, for the love of God, my kids can't listen to Kids Bop. I am totally screwed. Well, what I found out is that uh, when I looked under the query log, look at this here, spclient.wg.spotify.com was blocked. And uh, once I whitelisted it by, by just clicking on whitelist, um, you have to wait about five minutes, I think, for the, the Pi Hole cache to clear. But then once you do, bam. I now, thank the Lord, can listen to Kids Bob Kids. A town has been saved and a tragedy has been averted. So that's it. That's kind of a pie hole in a nutshell. Um, if you've got questions about it, hit me up at 7ms.us and uh, I'm, I'm happy to help you best I can. Uh, I hope you have a great day and a blessed week and I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7 Minute Security a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us.